Around the time Mewtwo was released as DLC, data miners discovered the victory and stage themes for Roy from Fire Emblem and Ryu from Street Fighter within the update data. This led to speculation on whether this was just thrown in there for a few laughs and chuckles or these characters were actually going to be DLC. Well, before E3 2015 was about to kick off, Nintendo scheduled a Smash Bros. livestream in which Masahiro Sakurai would reveal new content coming to the game. A mere day before the livestream commenced, an update was put out for Smash Bros. too early and data miners were able to look through it. Within the file, they were able to find the classic mode victory cinematic for both Roy and Ryu, confirming their place as DLC characters. People were then able to hack the game to play as these characters before their announcement, alongside playing on DLC stages such as Dreamland 64 and Suzaku Castle, SimCity, Star Fox, Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2 is the same situation. There are so many different versions on the SNES, I just decided to go with the one that started it all. Ryu's lesser of his two final smashes doesn't do a ton of damage, and isn't all that flashy either. It's just basically a longer lasting, farther reaching Hadouken. Now this is more like it. If you activate Ryu's final smash nearby an opponent, he performs a Shin Shoryuken, which deals much more damage, has a lot more visual flair, and is just a lot more fun to use. The biggest release of the month, debatably, was Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challenge. It was Street Fighter 2, released on a cartridge, for $40. Now that is just disgusting. Fundamentally, Ultra Street Fighter 2 was a repackage of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, a game released on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 digitally in 2008. It has a few extra features that are admittedly cool, but come on, this is worth 20 bucks at the most. Games like Street Fighter required some specific button inputs to perform key moves, and thus would encourage newcomers to just mindlessly button mash. For some reason, the Genesis version of Super Street Fighter 2 had online play added. No other version of Street Fighter 2 on the Wii Shop had this, and of all versions to add it to, well, this was a surprise to put it lightly. And doesn't work these days, nice ruined. But no other video game franchise, in my opinion, has been milked to death more so than... Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Hyper Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD Remix, Ultra Street Fighter 2 The Final Challengers, and that's just Street Fighter 2! The fighting game craze started with Street Fighter 2 in 1991, and a year later. Anybody remember Street Fighter Cross Tekken? Correct answer, nobody does! It was in fact a Street Fighter and Tekken crossover, but with gameplay that was more so Street Fighter with its 2D fighting style compared to Tekken's 3D style. But what if we got another Street Fighter and Tekken crossover that plays like Tekken? Well, we're in luck, son of a bitch. Announced at the same time as Street Fighter Cross Tekken in summer of 2010, that game only took Capcom a year and a half to squirt onto store shelves. Tekken Cross Street Fighter really didn't get any development updates at all, and as of 2016, the game has been put on hold. Being eight years since the announcement, I think it's fair to say the game in its original state has been cancelled. If it released around the same time as Street Fighter Cross Tekken, that would have been a little weird to see both games on the shelf. You have Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Tekken Cross Street Fighter. That's the perfect opportunity for the worst Christmas ever for the Tekken Cross Street Fighter fan asking their mom for the game. Mega Man, Capcom's golden child, right after Ryu. Mewtwo, Lucas, and Roy all came alongside newcomers Ryu, Cloud, Corn, and Bayonetta. Street Fighter Cross Tekken. This comes with 45 gem power-ups, and people still say the economy's in shambles. We get a copy of the game with exclusive cover art that denotes it's the special edition. Well, that's nice. An exclusive prequel story comic book? Well, it's well illustrated, but it's just a part of the instruction manual. Hey, I mean, an upside to this is that it's probably way harder to lose as it's just gonna sit in the game case since it's also a manual, but it also feels like they were cutting some costs. However, it's all about the Street Fighter Cross Tekken arcade cabinet replica piggy bank. How's that for a catchphrase? Well, it's a plastic, non-functioning arcade cabinet you can spank some coins into. You have to assemble this yourself and... Childbirth? Kidney stones? Assembling the Street Fighter Cross Tekken Arcade Bank. This thing is dreadful to put together. You have to apply so much pressure to these pieces and it never feels like you're doing it correctly. But in the end, it's all right. This is kind of cute. Nowadays, I don't think it's totally out of the question to offer playable mini arcade cabinets in collector's editions, but back in the horrifying year of 2012, this was all they could do. I believe it retailed for $70, so for 10 bucks more than the regular edition, I think this was definitely passable. Street Fighter's probably the first thing you think of when the term fighting game gets flung at you, but when you're asked to think of another fighting game series, many will definitely bring up another
another Capcom collection release, the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, and oh my god, this thing includes so many Street Fighters, and it retail for the same price as Ultra Street Fighter 2 retail for a year ago. Well, what's going on here? This has 12 games on it, including five Street Fighter 2s, and Ultra Street Fighter 2 has one Street Fighter 2. Please explain that $40 price point. They have like a Street Fighter 2 one, Final Fantasy, Street Fighter, Street Fighter 4. You know, Capcom has tried to put a lot of their fighting games on mobile, and a lot of them have been delisted over time. Street Fighter 2 Collection, Street Fighter 4, 4 Volt, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. There was this app called the Capcom Arcade, which included a ton of Capcom Arcade games, most of which were just Street Fighter 2. But here we have Street Fighter 4 Champion Edition, the only one still available on the App Store. Jesus! Everything is so damn low quality. I'm no Street Fighter aficionado, but a fighting game like this does not work very well with no actual buttons or sticks. Some games work alright with the digital control layout, and some games are Street Fighter 4. If they just had to put Street Fighter 4 on mobile, they should have gone the Injustice route and designed something from the ground up, not do a straight conversion of the console release. Also, this thing wasn't properly formatted for iPhone 10s. What are they trying to tell me? Can't see. Exclusive Street Fighter comic, but none of these will ever compare. Street Fighter on the NES. Yes. The Final Fight games, Yoshi's Cookie, a few of the Street Fighters, adding online play to Super Street Fighter 2 on the Sega Genesis. I still get chills whenever I hear that. A lot of these mysteries are formed by what fans want to see, or what the game says and just never elaborates on. Street Fighter 2, Ryu says the infamous phrase, you must defeat Shang Long to stand a chance. Now I'm sure the localization team at the time said, oh yeah, people will like this, it really makes Ryu seem determined to win. When in reality, everybody said, who the fuck is Shen Long? It was a mistranslation of Ryu stating, if you cannot overcome the Shoryuken, you cannot win. There was a lot of mystery surrounding who Shang Long was for the longest time, with the magazine EGM just refusing to put out the flames. They were well known for their April Fool's hoaxes, and one of them happened to be details on how to find Shang Long and some background to the character. Capcom themselves have joked about the character, fake announcing him for Street Fighter 4. Uh, these kind of compilations don't really excite me anymore, as Capcom has done a ton of stuff like this in the past. Not only that, but many of the top games in here are available elsewhere on Nintendo Switch, like the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection and Capcom Beat'em Up Bundle 